Hello everyone, Nabil Qureshi with Creed 2.6 Ministries. Welcome to the last video in this nine-part series investigating the basics of Islam, Islam 101. In this video we're going to talk about Jihad. Now Jihad, if there ever was one, is a hot-button issue in Islam, and so I want to be very careful in how I approach it. I don't want to try to give my conclusions without first looking at the primary sources. Now I would say the primary sources here are the Qur'an and the Hadith and the most trustworthy of the books of Hadith is Sahih Bukhari. And so we'll take a look at these primary sources and I'll let you decide what you think about Jihad in Islam. Now the word Jihad itself means strife or struggle, specifically striving in the way of Allah. Those who engage in Jihad are called Mujahideen. The main controversy that you'll find about Jihad is its nature. Is it violent? Is it peaceful? Is it more peaceful than violent? Which has the greater emphasis? And apart from all this controversy, we can just take a look at what the primary sources have to say. When we look at the word jihad in the Quran, we find it used in different circumstances. For example, in chapter 22, verse 78 of the Quran, we see that jihad is used to urge Muslims to live their Muslim life in an appropriate manner. This is at least overtly quite peaceful. The same can be said for chapter 60, verse 1 of the Qur'an. The word jihad is used again, and in this case it's describing people who are striving in order to do what Allah asks them to, to leave certain people whom Allah dislikes. So in certain circumstances within the Qur'an, the word jihad is used outside of any overtly violent connotations. But there are instances in the Qur'an where the word jihad is used in violent contexts. When you look at chapter 9, verses 16 through 19, the word jihad is used twice. Well, what's the context of these verses? Muslims are being urged to fight against polytheists. They're told that this jihad is much more valuable than taking care of a mosque or giving water to a pilgrim. In other words, Allah is contrasting these peaceful sacrifices of taking care of a mosque or giving water to someone to the act of actually engaging in strife for Allah. And again, this context is a violent engagement. And the conclusion we're left with in this circumstance is that a violent jihad is more valuable. Now that's just the word jihad. The concept of struggling or striving for the cause of Allah is found in many, many more places in the Quran and it's much, much more clear. For example, Surah Al-Baqarah verse 216 tells Muslims that fighting is prescribed for them, that they have to do it. Allah is even here saying that He knows Muslims don't like fighting, but they have to do it anyway. Now, I, I want to say that the context of 2.16 isn't all that bad. For example, verse number 2.20 tells Muslims to take care of orphans. That's a great thing. But we do have verse 2.16, which does say fighting is prescribed for Muslims. And really, there's no arguing that that is the case in the Qur'an. You read chapter 9 of the Qur'an, it's just rife with engagement, violent engagement of those who oppose Islam. That's what we have in the primary source of the Qur'an, the most important source for Islamic theology. Let's take a look at Sahih al-Bukhari. Now we're very lucky that Imam Bukhari actually left us a whole book in one of his volumes dedicated specifically to jihad. So take a look at volume 4, book 52 of Sahih Bukhari. Now the first three hadith here don't actually tell us whether a violent or non-violent jihad is superior. But the fourth one makes it pretty clear. This is volume 4, book 52, number 44. And it says that a person who engages on the battlefield is basically accomplishing as much as a Muslim who is not on the battlefield but is praying unceasingly and has a fast that never ends. In other words, it's impossible to do as much good for Allah as being on the battlefield. Hadith number 46, just two hadith later, also makes it pretty clear what Muhammad is envisioning when he talks about the blessings of jihad. He says that a person who dies during jihad will receive paradise from Allah, and if he doesn't die, he'll receive booty, war booty. Well, it's pretty clear then, he's talking about someone who's engaged in a physical battle. Hadith number 50 says that a single endeavor of fighting is worth more than the forenoon and the afternoon and everything that's in it. Hadith number 53 says that no one who ever goes to heaven would want to come back except 
that person who died as a martyr in jihad, he would want to come back so he could die again. That's how great it is to die while engaged in jihad. Specifically in this hadith, we also have an incentive being given, that of a huri, a beautiful woman, who will be given to those who die in jihad. So we can see without having gone that far into this book of jihad, that there is a very specific form of jihad that Muhammad has in mind when he's talking about the blessings of jihad. And if we continue on, we see, for example, in Hadith 59, that the blood of a martyr is like perfume before Allah. In Hadith 64, we see that someone who dies in jihad goes to the highest level of paradise. This continues on. There are a total of 283 ahadith in this book of Sayyid Bukhari. And to remind you from an earlier video, Sayyid Bukhari is considered by most Muslims to be as good as gold. And so I suggest you take a look at this book, read these ahadith for yourself, get a solid understanding of what the primary literature has to say about jihad. Then go and talk to people, converse with others about what they think about jihad and see if what they think stacks up to what the primary evidence is. Now, I don't think I have to actually voice my own conclusion. I just read from the Qur'an and I read from the Hadith exactly what they say. Jihad is a very real thing in Islamic theology. It is enjoined upon Muslims. And we can tell what the nature of that jihad is if we just take a look at the Qur'an and a Hadith. As always, check out the description of this video to get more details on this issue. Thank you very much for watching this video and thank you so much for watching all nine videos on the basics of Islam. I hope one day to do an Islam 201 series, but we'll see what happens. For now, please give me the feedback that you had on these videos. Please stay posted on creed26.com on our blog, blog.creed26.com, to stay connected on information about the origins of Islam and Christianity. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to share this information with you. I pray that you are now equipped to understand the basics of Islam, to discuss Islam intelligibly with Muslims, and have a platform to learn more about their specific beliefs. May God bless you and lead you to his truth.